Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, our second event of Collage Live. Tonight, it is Tales from the Bayou. We're having a virtual Collage Fest New Orleans reunion, and it's great to see so many familiar names here. Uh, I'm going to speak a little bit about the event and where it comes from, and then we're going to uh, hear from eight artists who are going to share their experience of the event, and then we're going to open it up to everybody. A uh, couple points, uh, you're welcome to join in the chat and make comments and ask questions and exchange with one another. And uh, at the end of everyone's presentations, we're gonna use the raise the hand um, feature if you're interested in sharing your own story. I'm gonna just say a few words about Collage Fest New Orleans. For those who don't know, it's a multi-day festival and symposium about contemporary collage that takes place in New Orleans, and it explores collage and its role in art, culture, and society. The uh, event is produced by Collage Magazine, and it was started in 2018, and it's had a, an interesting brief history, And uh, but it felt like uh, not being able to have the event this year because of the pandemic, we still wanted to find a way to come together as a group because what Collage Fest did, I think very well, was create a sense of community among those people who attended the festival. I wanna say a few words about where Collage Fest comes from. Uh, back when I was in my 20s, I was working in gay men's health. And we, uh, well, there was this, uh, activist Eric Rofus who created this event called the Boulder Summit and there was a moment in the late 90s when gay men were surviving HIV and AIDS and this caused uh, something of, of a friction in the culture that uh, gay men had been fighting for so long that uh, things needed to kind of evolve and change and Eric's idea was that we should get a group of gay men together and essentially have a think tank to sit down and uh, process these changes that were going on in the culture and decide where the movement needed to go from there. And so he brought about 250 of us to Boulder, Colorado, where we took over this hotel resort type space. And we basically just talked about where the movement was at. But what was interesting about that experience and how it informs Collage Fest is Eric was remarkable at bringing everyone from street level activists who were doing outreach, drag queens, uh, sex workers, uh, policy makers, up until like the you know, undersecretary of health and human services and folks from the Center for Disease Control and getting them all into a room, getting us all into a room and just getting us to talk to one another. And that feeling of community and exchange was a remarkable experience as a, a young 26 year old man to have. And that very much informed, <laughs> believe it or not, my thinking around Collage Fest New Orleans. In the early years of the magazine, it was somewhat strange to be building this magazine and working with this community and meeting people from all over the world and never meeting any of them in person. I think we tried a couple of meetups, maybe in New Orleans and in Providence and in Portland, but we never really got together. And that was a profoundly odd experience for me uh, as someone who was in the middle of all of this activity. And so we had talked for a number of years about uh, you know, creating this kind of event that would bring artists together and academics and writers together to just talk about collage and, and think about it. We're also motivated by the fact that we see collage as a bastard medium in the art world that needs a lot more respect and a lot more understanding. And so we thought getting folks together would be a way to pursue that to understand that phenomena better and pursue some solutions to that. And so Chris Byrne and I kicked this idea around for a couple of years 
And it wasn't until I took a trip to the Vancouver Art Book Fair in 2016 and um, had some uh, visits with folks in Portland and Seattle. And there I met Kevin Samsel and went to their collage, the, a, the collage meetup that was taking place in Portland at the time. And maybe Kevin can speak to a little bit of that when he presents. And I went up to Seattle and I met Lori Conyer for the first time. And my sense from that trip was that there was some interest, that it was actually a viable idea that people might actually want to get together and convene and um, spend some time with one another. And so that was in 2017, we decided essentially to do it. And because I live part time in New Orleans, New Orleans felt like a a, a place to have this event, that there was the infrastructure here, there were hotels, it was a bit of a party city, and so you, there was a lot of fun to be had. But more importantly, we felt like we could do something in New Orleans that we couldn't do in a lot of other cities, which was truly embed in the community. New Orleans arts community is wonderfully uh, artist-driven. It's a lot of folks who are hustling and working, and it's diverse. You have uh, the, the finer kind of commercial galleries in the central business district, and you have the funkier artist-driven galleries in the Bywater area. And you have enough universities and colleges uh, to have their own spaces. And the art community here is resilient and vibrant and diverse. And we thought that was uh, a lot of wonderful elements to put into this recipe for this event. Collage Fest New Orleans works on space. The last thing I wanted to create when we created Collage Fest was a, uh, all of us in a hotel room at a Holiday Inn. We wanted to uh, be in bars and coffee houses and spaces that were part of communities. And we wanted to avoid uh, hotel lighting. <laughs> and, you know, there were enough venues in New Orleans that we were familiar with that we could connect with and build relationships with that it allowed us to do it here. And so in 2017, we decided to do it for July 2018. And uh, that's kind of what we did. Um, we put out a call to artists and writers and researchers and said, who has something to say? What do they want to say? And we started building a program for the event. And we also knew that the the collage community is incredibly diverse. We have everything from art historians and college professors to working artists and art professionals. And we have people who are just enthusiastic and uh, love this medium, but it's not their primary job. It is a little bit of everyone. And so we wanted to create a, an event that allowed everyone to kind of feel comfortable, uh, participate, be equal with other people in the room. And going back to my experience with the Boulder Summit, it was very important to me that we broke down those hierarchies that exist in the art world, that a gallerist or a museum professional or a college professor what was on par and having conversation with someone who just discovered the medium and was thinking, hey, this might be something I'm into. I'd like to think we were really successful at doing that. Part of what makes Collage Fest work is that it's a bit of an obstacle course. It is decentralized. And uh, it's also taking place in July in New Orleans with heat and humidity. And people have to work together to get from the Central Business District to the Bywater. And they have to share rides and they have to communicate and connect with one another as we hop around the city. And, and that, that is somewhat, that obstacle course is somewhat intentional. And it goes back to my experience at the Boulder Summit. As much as I enjoyed panels and structured conversations, um, I learned more sharing a hot tub with uh, someone from the CDC having informal conversation than I did with the formal presentations that were taking place in the room. And I believe that's also true with Collage Fest, where folks get a lot more out of that conversation that happens in between the events than uh, 
compared to the events uh, and the and the presentations themselves. So that's part of a little glimpse of what Collage Fest is from my point of view. I will add that it's um, it is a glorious amount of work, <laughs> but it is so rewarding that uh, for both 2018 and 2019, which got truncated by uh, the threat of a hurricane, one of the things I get out of it is a real sense that collage is a community and a movement, that collage is more than a medium and a genre. And more importantly, I get a sense that collage is more than the art on the wall, that collage is the people who are involved in it. And for me, it, as, as an editor of a magazine, it really reinforces that we're not just talking about art, we're talking about people, that we have lives. We have lives outside of the art and we have personalities outside of our art. And the art is central and important to who we are and why we come together, but that we are whole human beings. And now I find myself when I look at art thinking about the whole human being. When I look at the work of the Surrealists and the Dadaists, I start thinking, what was it like to run into these guys and women when uh, on the streets of Paris in 1922? And I start enjoying how they loved and supported with one another, how they fought and argued with one another, and the humanity of the work and the stories behind the artwork are almost as important to me and as edifying to me as the artwork itself. And one of the things I love about Collage Fest New Orleans and events like Collage Live is, you know, you see this brilliant work uh, being made and you see it kind of on Instagram and on Facebook and out in the world or in the pages of the magazine. These are opportunities to kind of meet the person behind that. And I'll tell you, I'm always surprised um, when I meet the person behind the work and how similar and sometimes different they are. And I think that, that having opportunities to do that make us a stronger community. They, it makes us better artists and it makes us uh, just better human beings. So with that, let's hear from some of these stories. Again, uh, after, we're going to do questions and answers and also additional sharing from folks after the uh, formal presentations, and but do raise your hand and do feel free to put comments and notes in the in the chat. Our first uh, our first speaker is Danielle Cole, and Danielle Cole uh, played a very important role um, unwittingly in the first Collage Fest. We had an event called, well, essentially it was an event of storytelling about collage that took place at a karaoke bar called Cajun's Pub. And Danielle Cole inspired the uh, title of that event, which is, Why is that dinosaur holding a vacuum? And if Danielle's ready, I'm gonna turn it over to, to her. Are you there, Danielle? I am. Well, let's get Chris and Chris to work their magic and put you on the screen. <laughs> yes, uh, I think, can you hear my voice? start my video. Fantastic. Are we, can you hear me? We're together. Yay. Hey, Danielle. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just want to, I think I always need to start by saying thank you so much to Rick and thank you so much to Chris Byrne, who is in charge of all the technical things. Um, I am going to start my story in a moment. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to hide my face. So stay with me um, as I do both those things. All right, Tales from the Bayou. Me wanting you. This piece of art is an exact expression of the way I feel about every member of the Collage Fest community. This intense, strange, sweet platonic love that I have for our art form and the artists who embrace it. This work was created by my 11 year old cousin, Teddy, who combined Lettreset with a singular collage element to express her deep love for her best friend, Marlene. She was one of over 50 people who received the collage kits I've built so far during the pandemic. 
The night before they closed our borders and put all of Canada under lockdown, my partner and I were talking about what the world was going to look like during the quarantine and how we might be able to help our neighbors. As an artist and educator, I knew people were going to need activities to keep them engaged and they weren't going to be sitting home around their living rooms doing advanced calculus. Every week during shutdown, I packed collage kits and set them outside for people to pick up. And soon I started getting messages from people that lived very far away requesting kits for themselves. One of the perks of the kits going out into the world has been the images of collages that have come back my way. And here are two of them, one by Valencia, age nine, and author Camilla Gibb. I feel very deeply that the seeds of this outreach were sown during the first Collage Fest, where I met so many artists engaged in acts of perpetual exchanges and sharing. Perhaps we share so actively because we are offsetting the fact that we are little thieves and paper alchemists. One of the amazing things about the first Collage Fest that there was that we were mingling with collage artists who had made it in, quote, the real world. We could listen and learn from working established and published artists, as well as outliers and pioneers. I tried to act cool when I found myself on a gallery tour with a jealous curator. At one point, she turned to me and asked me if the tag was sticking out of her shirt. And I was so overstimulated by meeting her that I answered quickly and wandered off, and I never personally told her how inspiring she is to me, that I own all her books, that I follow her on Instagram, that I listen to her podcast, and that my name is also Danielle. The jealous curator created daily posts about Collage Fest and the collage artists who were there. We were uplifted by her presence. During Collage Fest, I spent some time at the collage making space housed at the back of a cafe where some folks had literally planted themselves. I had the pleasure of sitting next to Alan Bealey. And when I was moving some elements around to make a composition, I asked his advice and he started stacking all these pieces up one on top of another. I was completely alarmed and I wasn't yet ready to apply his beautiful reordering to my controlled collage style. Here you can see an image of Alan's work and me failing to take his advice. When I applied to speak at Collage Fest, I felt most able to talk about how persistent I was in trying to get my work out into the world. In his curation of speakers and panels, Rick decided that the best fit for me was as a storyteller in a bar with some other dynamic folk. The same day of the storytelling event, there was an event that involved men and women that looked like they refused to let go of frat life, running around NOLA drinking their faces off. Imagine the running of the bulls if the bulls were roller derby girls. Many drunk imaginary bull runners started to converge at Cajun's pub, which was known for its nightly karaoke gathering in force while we collage artists were telling stories involving paper and scissors. Part of my journey of self-promotion has involved a small degree of stalking Margaret Atwood by way of donating my art to her yearly Peebo fundraising event. There was a moment when I was telling my story and the crowd in the bar was getting restless for their karaoke fix. And I put up this slide and Daniel Lynn pumped his hand in the air and I felt supported by the entire collage community. As you can see by this photo of Margaret Atwood at the 2020 Peebo Gala, we are all in a strange, new, and different place. The magic of the collage community and many arts communities is that we continue to engage and persevere in our desire to connect, create, and grow. To my collage peers, I love you in this intense, strange, sweet platonic way and I look forward to seeing y'all again soon. Thank you. Thank you for that, Danielle. Uh, Danielle really re reminds me of how uh, much this community kind of um, sometimes just uh, needs each other and um, needs, to, needs to know that other people are there and other people are, are listening and working and, and, and struggling with problems the way we all are struggling with problems, whether it's how to work out this composition or just how to get your work out there and, and you know, live as an artist. Um, uh, I'm gonna bring up Kevin Samsel.
Kevin organized and facilitated the collage making space at Collage Fest New Orleans. And he's gonna speak a little bit about how that worked and his experience of it. Uh, Kevin comes from Portland, Oregon, where he was also running a collage space when we met. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> hey, how's it going? You can hear me okay? You sound great. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so Collage Fest um, was amazing. Uh, I've been to it the first two years. Um, it's, uh, it's been really interesting uh, <laughs> how it's happened like the first year, um, even though it was like the first year was, was like so good, you know, so inspiring and, and uh, you know, as flawless as, as it can get. Uh, last year was a, a little bit of a challenge, um, but it was still a lot of fun. And um, one of the things uh, about last year that I thought was really cool was everyone was so unsure if things were going to happen, uh, where we were supposed to meet, uh, if, if things were canceled, if venues were closed. And... Um, I think on that first day, uh, Rick was, um, you know, uh, he was texting with me and probably a bunch of other people. And we ended up meeting um, there at the uh, theater space. And, um, and people were, you know, like I said, kind of uncertain about what was happening. But we had all this uh, collage stuff out. And um, it wasn't even like uh, a day where we were supposed to have like an open collage kind of thing happening, but it just sort of turned into this thing where everyone just got all their materials and a bunch of people just started collaging uh, just because we were all hanging out. And um, it just kind of turned into this impromptu, like, you know, sort of bonus session of collage making. Um, and that was really great. I think that kind of illustrates the spirit overall of what um, of what Collage Fest is um, is is trying to do. Um, I did meet Rick in Portland uh, when I was hosting a collage making night here, uh, which I did for about three years. And then um, uh, and he met me pretty early on in like my you know my like infatuation obsession with collage art. Um, I just started doing it in 2014, like at the beginning of the year and um, just really like kind of dove head first into it. Started um, doing the uh, collage making night, um, started writing stuff for Collage Magazine um, and a couple of other places. And um, the thing about the uh, collage making space and this emergence of um, people hosting collage making nights around the country in different parts um, of the country and other countries too um, is is so uh, great. You know, it's just such a community thing to do. It's like uh, something that that everyone can do and it's not like you have to have like a bunch of easels and like paints and like you know fancy stuff like that it's um it's just a a really great um thing that everyone can do in the community so um rick went to one of those nights uh, early on and when he was uh, organizing the collage fest he wanted to have that kind of element to it uh, which I thought was was awesome. So, um, so I helped him organize that stuff. Um, Jay Baronis, uh, a good friend of mine, um, helped me uh, with sort of running that space. And um, we uh, there was you know there was all the other events that were happening, and those were all great. But I felt like the um, the collage making space was really uh, the place where people could kind of meet and, and mingle and, and, and talk. And it's like, you know, you, you, the, the act of like sitting among, you know, a table full of people uh, looking down at your book or magazine and cutting stuff out and having these conversations 
um, is uh, it's it's so uh, it's so great. It's such a connecting um, activity, and and of course, you know, all of us know that um, making collages is is something that's um, that frees us. I I think uh, out of our head, out of our body. It's kind of a meditative sort of uh, activity, um, and. So to have that space where we're all kind of doing this and, 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 and also meeting people and, and, and looking around and seeing what other people are doing, um, it's, it's really amazing. And, and um, I knew, uh, you know, um, a handful of people online before all this stuff started happening and um, like going to New Orleans and, and being there the last couple of years, I just met so many great people. Um, and uh, you know, uh, um, Cheryl uh, is one of the first ones that I met, and she lives up near Seattle, and so we we have this Northwest bond, and and I think she's a really great um, sort of ambassador to uh, collage art, and very supportive, and just has a really good way of connecting to people, um, and so. Uh, meeting her and talking to her was was great and I met some people through her and um, and more recently uh, we have um, started uh, working on a website ourselves where we're going to be featuring collage artists um, and that's going to debut probably in about a month I think sometime in August we'll have it ready where we have six artists that um, are are uh, going to be in the first uh, issue or the first show. We're sort of treating it as an online gallery, so we're curating it. Um, and there are people from all over the world, so it's really exciting. Um, but uh, uh, to get back to Collage Fest, it's just such a, a, a great um, event. I'm sad that it's not happening this year. Um, I know that there's there's talk of hopefully mm -hmm. returning next year and, and maybe having it in different cities um, later on to uh, in the coming years. And I think that's great. Um, I would love to help coordinate something like that in Portland. If people want to come to Portland and do stuff and um, uh, yeah, you know, the thing I also wanted to say too, which I thought of, which is kind of interesting is you always, you know, the, the thing about, Portland or about about collage is that um, you know it is something that a lot of people can do and it's like like Rick was saying there's like professors there's art historians and all these people but there's also uh, punks and and people that don't uh, you know uh, come from a formal training or people who are self-taught and um, and it's kind of like uh, to me it reminds me of like the zine uh, scene you know like people making zines and people like doing their their thing and and creating this community uh, of people who make zines and people who express themselves in these different ways and um, and then you know you see these uh, like zine conventions all over the country and stuff like that and and I sort of think that collage is kind of like you know it's sort of um, it's different of course a little bit but it's it's sort of following in that sort of spirit in that kind of in those kind of footsteps like I think there'll be other collage gatherings like in different um, cities and places around the world in years to come so this is really exciting to be part of like sort of the first uh, you know the first wave of, of this beautiful thing so thanks Rick and thanks everyone for for listening Thanks for sharing that, Kevin. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you were speaking a little bit to jump back about uh, that 2019. So for those that don't know, what, what happened in 2019 was as we were just getting started, the Wednesday of Collage Fest, which is usually a, a day of workshops, and um, then we move into a, a, a meet and greet that evening, that uh, uh, the city of New Orleans experienced some kind of historic flooding. So I woke up that morning to all these alerts on my phone and, you know, pictures of the central business district with like a foot of water in it. And it was, it was both kind of intense, but also not something that we uh, have never experienced here in New Orleans. It was just 
a little bit more than usual. But you know, street flooding in New Orleans, uh, mostly because of climate change and uh, lack of investment in infrastructure, is a is an ongoing issue. But that kind of caught everyone off guard, and we didn't know what was open and what wasn't open, and what venues we could use and couldn't use. So we all kind of piled in, as Kevin said, into the uh, Cafe Istanbul, which was one of our event sites. And that's where real, some real magic happened because uh, what happened was is that uh, Kevin was like, yeah, let's get the collage making supplies. Let's tell everyone to meet there. We started spreading the word via text and, and putting announcements out on the website. And um, a bunch of us just kind of piled into the Cafe Istanbul. They set up some tables and some folks got collage making going and we took a couple hours to figure out what was going on. And then on top of that, and it feels like the same event, but it was actually two different events. Um, uh, then all of a sudden we started hearing that there was a hurricane and heading towards the Gulf and it would be coming towards, towards New Orleans. And then it became a kind of different scenario of uh, uh, preparing for hurricane, not knowing, you know, hurricanes are unpredictable. So we never knew if it was going to actually come to New Orleans or not. And the information changes every four to six hours. And so you're basically waiting for the next update from the mayor, from the governor to decide what needs to happen. And I think on Thursday, we just decided we're going to camp out at Cafe Istanbul again. We're going to do a bunch of presentations and uh, we're going to have collage making. Um, and uh, basically, that's what we did. And frankly, it says something about the resiliency of this community that folks kind of just stepped up, jumped in. We were able to have some panels and some presentations and we were able to kind of move forward with the event a little bit. We ended up having also our art party later that evening. Eventually the governor declared a state of emergency and uh, those folks who needed to get out of town got out of town and those folks who could stick around, stuck around. And I think we'll have some stories from folks who experienced that moving on. Next, I wanna bring up Christopher Kurtz. He is the coordinator of Collage Institute and the co-founder of the Mystic Crew of Scissors and Glue, which is New Orleans collage meetup group. And um, it's, it's a little bit more than that, but he can, he can talk about that a little bit. And Christopher is gonna speak about his transition from attendee to organizer to an acting ambassador of New Orleans to those who are visiting. And I'll say, Christopher, I met him in the first year and uh, he has progressively just stepped up and have been, has been more and more help uh, the deeper we've got gotten into this. So Christopher, take it away and um... uh, Thank you. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's really exciting to uh, see this program come to life um, after having worked on it for the past month or so. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I'm gonna, I, I guess I'm, my story is kind of about synchronicity, I think. Um, uh, this idea that these things come into your life and you have to be paying attention uh, to really catch it um, and to take advantage of it. Uh, so uh, in 2018, I had only just recently started getting back into art um, seriously. I, I went to art school, I dropped out of art school, and then there were kind of 10 years where I just didn't really think about it uh, very much. And then um, sometime around the beginning of 2018, I found collage uh, through a friend, just making like collage postcards for fun. And I was like, you know, this is, this is it. This is the, the art that I've always wanted to make. Um, I didn't know that I could make. And so I, I went hard. I, you know, I bought all the supplies. I, I found a bunch of uh, free books and magazines and I got to work. And then uh, I found out about a collage fest uh, that spring. And I waffled too on whether or not to do it. Uh, I, I, I wasn't sure if I should take off work or, you know, 
but it was it was here in my city, uh, and my wife convinced me uh, that it was synchronicity, that it was the universe telling me like, hey, dude, do this. Uh, and and then I thought, well, maybe I'll just do a couple events. Um, but in the end, uh, I bit the bullet. I took off from work. I did the whole event. I went to everything I could, um, and it was great. Uh, it was it was one of the best uh, moments of my life so far. Um, I remember showing up. Um, well, uh, let me let me start my slideshow. Um, So I remember showing up uh, at a loft and feeling nervous. Uh, I have a lot of social anxiety, and uh, it kind of felt like uh, first day of school, you know, uh, not knowing anybody, not knowing where to sit. Um, I actually remember uh, JRC uh, of the Seaside Fleet was one of the first people I talked to, uh, and and immediately uh, I felt more welcomed. Uh, I felt more comfortable, and it was that every time I talked to someone. Uh, everyone there was just so nice and open and um, it, it, was, it was funny because, I, you know, I, it was my home turf, but I, you know, I felt welcomed uh, among all of these other collage artists. Um, and it kind of took on summer camp vibes. vibes. Um, all of these people having fun, uh, doing these things that interest them, that they're passionate about, um, and kind of getting to explore the city that I knew pretty well uh, through new eyes also. Um, and uh, I remember going to the collage making space uh, that Kevin Samsel was running. Uh, it was actually, I had underdressed uh, for Cafe uh, Istanbul, and it was freezing there. And I was like, I just need to get out of here. Uh, and so I went over to the collage making space at Artisan Bar, and I think I stayed there for a good portion of my time uh, during that that first day, um, listening in on the workshops and just getting to talk to people and meet new people. Um, and I, I actually remember at one point uh, Kevin was like, "I need to I need to go do something else," and uh, he he asked me if I could if I could kind of oversee the collage making space for a moment while he stepped out, and that was my first responsibility uh, within the collage universe. Um, I uh, also had my car booted in the central business district because I left it parked there for too long while I was at Cafe Istanbul and, and Artisan Bar. Um, I had my collage Fortune Told by Charles Wilkin, uh, and that was a really fun experience. And I participated in the Great Collage Swap. Um, uh, I remember uh, Simon Blake got my piece and it was uh, a collage I would never show to anyone nowadays. <laughs> um, and uh, I won the Tans Cart competition, uh, which was the, um, the, the cards that they gave us. Uh, actually, I have one from 2019 uh, with people's uh, names on it. And you were to find those artists and get them to sign your card. And then at the end, uh, they drew from a hat one one winner and it was me and i uh i won one of everything that collage had to offer at that point and thus began uh my obsession uh and now i will have to collect every single thing going forward obviously uh and i met locals local artists uh at collage fest as well that first year um, and that ended up becoming the Mystic Crew of Scissors and Glue. I met Hope Amico. Um, she recognized I was wearing a local t-shirt and struck up a conversation with me. And in the collage making space, we just kept saying like, this is so great. Like, I wish we could do this all the time. And so then she messaged me the next month and we started a monthly collage meetup. And that has blossomed into this huge thing for me. Uh, we we did a World Collage Day event uh, the next year with Whole Village Art Therapy. Uh, so we were uh, getting kids involved in making collages. And then we, um, we planned a lot of things for Collage Fest 2019. Um, but of course, Barry happened. Uh, and, and Rick already talked about that. But it was interesting because to a local, the street flooding is just another Tuesday. 
and a hurricane is just a chance to sit at home in the dark for a little while. Um, most of the time, it's not that big of a deal, but for all of the people traveling, it was a huge deal. And um, and I remember, you know, Rick coming to me and being like, "Am I am I being uh, diplomatic enough? Am I am I making sure that people take it seriously without, you know, making it without being like a danger monger?" Um, and, I, and I think Rick did a great job. And I I'm proud of all of the people that stuck it out. Um, I think we ended up still having a really good time during that. Uh, rained out collage fest. Um, so uh, yeah, this is us in the uh, Cafe Istanbul space, uh, impromptu collage making space. And uh, here's Michael Peon, uh, another member of the Mystic Crew of Scissors and Glue, a good friend of mine. Uh, and he was kind of, <laughs> I remember he wasn't really ready for this. So he kind of just, uh, kind of just winged this talk a little bit. Uh, and afterward was a, he was a, he was a little shaky. <laughs> um, and then some of the things that we did, we helped, uh, Rosie Shinners, uh, with her wheat pasting, uh, around the city. We set up a post gallery at Michael's house and unfortunately nobody really got to take advantage of it. Um, but the plan was to have other Collage Fest attendees come out and put their collages up uh, on this wall here. Uh, and here we see Rosie doing that with one of her own collages. Um, we also made collage kits that were put into everybody's um, program uh, packet, uh, something to sort of like get you started. Uh, and we also did the Unfamiliar Vegetables called Artist, which we put up at Artisan Bar during Collage Fest 19. And that was a, a huge success. We had so many great responses and uh, we will be releasing the book of all of those uh, pieces of art in the fall. And here are some images of them up at Artisan. And it's just some really amazing work. And, uh, and I guess to explain that project, uh, we found an image uh, called Familiar Vegetables, and it was by the artist Carla Bonacazzi, and she was one of the, she was the first woman to design costumes and floats for Mardi Gras cruise. So this was back in like um, 1890 something, uh, and the 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 carnival's theme was um, a dream of a vegetable kingdom, and then so we put that image out there, and people uh, cut it up and turned it into uh, these beautiful pieces of work. And we also did the collab slab, which was also up in Artisan Bar. And here it is, um, before anything's been done to it, uh, Michael Pajon, he put this uh, together. It's a three foot by four foot uh, slab with some aged paper on it. And we invited people to collaboratively collage onto it throughout the course of the event. Um, oh, and here is one of JRC's uh, seaside fleet boats. He couldn't make it that second year, so he mailed me a whole box of these boats with uh, the intention that I would put them up around uh, the city and at the events. Uh, I actually still have a handful of those because I didn't get to do quite as much uh, that year as I had planned, uh, but they still made it up in a couple places. And here, uh, the Collapse Lab became a place for Rosie to demonstrate during her street art uh, workshop with Lance uh, and Laurie O'Brien, and there's Fan Club 13, he put his contribution up, and then there's my contribution, and it just continued to grow. Uh, people were in this space for a good portion of that event because there wasn't too much else to do. We had been rained out, um, so some people were staying at the Aloft Hotel, the host hotel, and some people were coming and hanging out at Artisan Bar. Um, and I really love the way that the Collabs Lab came together over time. And the end result, I think, it's, it's chaos, but it's also beautiful. It, it really does, it works uh, for me. And uh, we're still looking for a permanent home for the Collabs Lab, but I'm sure we'll find one eventually. Right now it's in Michael Payon's uh, uh, studio. And then, oh, and this moment is when the folks at the Aloft uh, wanted to build a bunch of collage boats and put them out in the flooded streets. But by the time they actually got around to doing it, there weren't really any flooded streets. So it was us kind of walking around 
the central business district until we found this puddle on the corner here. Um, but they, they made it work. Uh, and I love that moment because it just speaks to how like fun and kooky and determined all of these artists were. Um, and then the one other thing we had planned for that year was the Surreal Salon. Uh, and we were going to encourage people to come dressed up in costumes. And since we didn't get to do it, uh, here's the costume that I had planned for that event. Uh, it'll make it out to a costumed event one day. And uh, the, the last thing I wanted to say is just, I still have the packets from Collage Fest because I collect and hoard everything. Um, I have my name tag from that time that I collaged for the second year. Um, some of the collage kits that we made as the Mystic Crew of Scissors and Glue and the program from the first year, uh, which I think will become a collector's item eventually. And so thank you. Thank you to everyone for uh, attending these events um, and supporting Collage Magazine, Collage Institute, and I can't wait till we can all gather again in New Orleans. Well, thank you for that, that sharing that experience, Christopher. It's, this is really an interesting experience for me because uh, I'm having my memory jogged of all these things that took place or that happened or that we did that um, or that I heard about that I was busy doing something else. And so this is kind of a really neat experience. Um, I want to hear in chat how, how people are um, hearing these stories and, and what the thoughts are. But I also want to introduce Sarah Cowling. Sarah is a uh, painter, originally a painter from London, Ontario. She's been painting since 1996. And she's going to talk about how the event influenced her art practice. And I remember Sarah, let's see, is Sarah up here? Coming up. And um, yeah, Sarah's, Sarah was just, there she was there with a buddy. You were there with a buddy, right, Sarah? That's right, with Linda. Linda, yeah. And you all were so enthusiastic. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's the word, yeah. <laughs> and, and if you don't mind, I'll, I'll share with you what was going on in my head when I met sure. you. Sure. I was thinking, how did these two little old ladies from Canada find <laughs> this event in New Orleans. And, yeah. but you, you, you were, you were like fit right in, man. So I'm <laughs> going to hand the, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hand the uh, mic over to you as it were and okay. uh, take, take it away. And Christopher is going to show your slides. Okay. That's excellent. Thank you. All right. So, um, as Rick mentioned, Linda and I uh, came down to Collage Fest. I actually saw it through the Collage Fest magazine and got very excited and we wanted to go there. So uh, Chris, you want to go to the first slide? There we are. That's Linda walking down the street in front of me and familiar area to a lot of you, I'm sure. Probably early Thursday morning. We arrived on Wednesday. Big surprise, floods in the streets. If it had been a foot of snow, we would have known what to do with ourselves, but flooding was a whole new concept. Anyway, you wanna to go to the next one, please, Chris? And there are some more of the streets. They were just cleaning up early in the morning and we kind of thought it might be our only chance to look around. So a little bit of background. Um, I've been in London for, since 93 and painting and drawing and that kind of thing, but I really wanted to do collage. And collage was something that London had a problem with. They're quite a conservative little place. And they didn't really think it was art. So in desperation, three years ago, I started my own group. Could just call ourselves the Collage Collective and we get together to do collage. So if we can go to the next slide. Here's some of you folks. And we arrived in New Orleans and we couldn't believe it. Here were all these people doing collage and taking it seriously and being interested and interesting. And we met so many interesting people. I can't even remember the names of everybody. I'm going to say Rose Mueller, Red Falwell, April Fletcher, and Wendy Parker were four people who kind of, I remember their names, so they must have stood out for some reason. Let's go on to the next slide. One of the things I did was I took advantage of the opportunity to put in a piece for the Doug and Lori Kanier art collection and she accepted it. What a fantastic boost to me to get my work accepted. 
this is a piece I did with my group. Um, we all took a fortune cookie, took the fortune cookie and created something to go along with it. And my fortune cookie said, please yourself first. And for someone who, uh, you know, brought up three kids and kind of did everything for them, um, please yourself first was a new concept and pretty exciting. So that was that one. Can we go on to the next one, please? So I, I do have a bit of a thing about Alice in Wonderland. Um, and this is a piece I did with, with an Alice in Wonderland. Uh, I'm part of the studio tour here in London, and this is my real opportunity to show my work. And uh, that, was, that was really fun to do. That's Alice, you know, drinking and getting small and everything getting big, even the mosquitoes. Can we go to the next slide, please? Um, I'm pretty sure the two girls here came out of something that I got from the uh, opportunity to uh, do collage at Collage Fest. I think I picked them up there. Uh, and, uh, you know, right there, that's a big boost to me that uh, I got, got information and ideas from being there. Let's move on, please, to the next slide. Again, uh, the gentleman came from one of the magazines that was on the table there in New Orleans at Collage Fest. And I had a lot of fun with that one. Um, this was a show they wanted things on time, something to do with time. So we've got the time bomb and time ticking away. On to the next one, please. I also do some collage where I take cardboard and I paint it and I draw on it and then I cut it up. I cut it up upside down so I can't see what I'm doing. And when I turn it over, I put the pieces back together like a jigsaw puzzle and see what I've got. Yeah, on to the next one, please. This was from the uh, little packet that came in our a parcel that we received when we arrived um, that we were just talking about in the, with the former uh, speaker. And so those were the pieces I got and uh, what I made up out of that one. Move on, please. So lately I've been doing the little call for artists from the Kanyer art collection for the little two by twos. And this, <laughs> this one is called Dogs Behaving Badly. <laughs> anyway, on we go to the next one, please. And this is also, uh, this is part two of uh, dogs behaving badly. <laughs> and on we go. We'll see one more, I think. Or maybe that's the end of my slideshow. Okay. That's great. Last thing I'll show you is I did do something for the party to be dressed up. I did an Alice in Wonderland fan that I was going to bring. So thank you very much. Thank you for all the coordinators. This has been the best thing for me. It gave me a whole boost that I needed to keep going and to work harder. Thanks, thank Rick. You. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, how's Linda doing? She's fine. She's moving to a new house. She's moving out of the country and into a village. So it's oh. pretty exciting. And uh, were you able to raise the profile of collage in London, Ontario? We're getting there. We're getting there. I'm getting to be a popular stop on the studio tour. So that's great. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. Um, as, uh, as someone who lives in New Orleans, um, I've never seen people drink the way they do in London, Ontario. Really? Well, you're talking students, though, right? <laughs> you're talking students. We got a lot of those. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, we're, you're welcome. We're next, we're going to hear from Paloma Treka, who is an artist and educator based in Chicago. And she's going to speak about the community that takes place or that takes shape as, in her words, attendees suspend all disbelief and willfully embrace strangers as family forever. This is the magic of NOLA and Collage Fest conspiring with the generous forces of artists and professional weirdos. And I appreciate Paloma because Paloma um, encourages me to embrace my professional weirdoness. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, take it away, Paloma. Okay, yeah. Um, if that's uh, one of those things I like to say sometimes, professional weirdos. Um, and I think that uh, Rick, you definitely fall into that category and I'm glad for it. I'm really glad. I'm really glad for that. Um, just listening to everybody's presentation this evening um, and 
thinking about the ways in which uh, people describe um, their experience or, or, or themselves characters in this collage fest, um, one thing that I really enjoyed was how there's such a range. You can be an ambassador, and that sounds so really, you know, like, like at a high level, an ambassador of collage. And in the same sentence, there's punks out there. And I feel like I, I'm a little bit of both, and I like that. Um, I feel like I am super hardcore collage fest um, as a collage fest attendee because last year I was also at the, um, you know, there during the hurricane. And um, in fact, me and, and uh, actually I, w I, I met a lot of people that hung on um, and that was a good thing. That was a really good thing. Um, but anyhow, I, I kind of wanted to start with how I found Collage Fest. Um, and we can get to the, we can get, get to what happened last year anyway. Um, so I'm going to switch to my screen, I think. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, let's see, let's see. Desktop one. Yeah. Hmm. Uh-oh. See, this is, I should have done the, um, the tech rehearsal and I didn't, um, I was so cocky. Okay, I've got it, here we go. Um, oh Lord, okay. Well, I'm just gonna keep talking because uh, another thing I realized is that I'm not only am I terrible at, at um, doing tech on the fly, but I'm also a terrible archivist. So I have a few items with me. Um, so I'm just gonna tell my story. Um, since I can't share my screen. I don't know why I can't, Christopher, help. I don't know why I can't share it. Um, anyhow. Uh, so, all right, so here's my story. Um, so in 2018, I, um, I was trying to find, you know, more of a community and I heard somebody say something terrible about Instagram and how Instagram, there's all these Instagram artists. And I wasn't on Instagram because I just kind of wrote it off as just one more thing that I, I'd have to do. And so anyway, I joined and, um, to, in 2018. And that was the same year that Collage Fest was launched. Um, so in any case, um, soon after I saw that it was launched, and uh, I realized that there was a lot of communities online on Instagram, and that was that was the thing that that um, that grabbed me. But but then you know, knowing that there was going to be a um, a festival in New Orleans, and I'm now I'm sad I can't show you my slide, but um, I, I have an affinity for that um, because not only have I you know not only am I a Chicagoan. But I'm also someone who started out in New Orleans because um, I, um, uh, you know, even though I was born in Mexico, I came at age one to New Orleans with my family, and um, you know, this is where this is where my family lived when I was a child, and you know, so it's where I learned to speak English, and um, you know, like I ate. Cajun and Creole food for the first few years of my life, um, you know, so, you know, like the, the idea of like, like being in a creative environment for this festival, for the Collage Fest, and being in, in, a, in a place of origin really appealed to me. So, uh, you know, so I, to uh, my really good friend, Lisa Barcy, who's also uh, an educator, she's also an animator, and also a terrific collage artist. She, um, <clears throat> she, uh, hang on a second. I've just got a message about how to share. Yeah, I, I, I still can't share it though. Hang on. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. So, so, um, where was I though? What was I saying? <laughs> oh yeah, my, my good friend Lisa Barcy, uh, who's also an animator. 
and a terrific artist. I said, I'm, I'm, I want to go to this festival. You want to go to this festival. We're not going to go to this festival unless we go together. So let's go together. Um, and um, in any case, um, she's, she agreed. I had to, I had to kind of like, like um, nudge a little bit. But that's the whole point is you kind of need someone to nudge you sometimes as artists. This is, what, this is exactly what you need is you need somebody to, to push you a little bit. And we thought that if we go to this fest, we might push each other a little bit and we might also get pushed a little bit more by other attendees. Um, so anyway, in, in the end, um, what, we what we decided to propose because you, it was necessary to be presenters as, as well as attendees, um, was uh, to present our work as animators, how, you know, how we, how we made collage move, basically. How we made collage in motion. And um, so, so this is what we presented um, the first year. And we presented with Laurie O'Brien and also Simon Blake. And I remember, like, you know, it was so fantastic. We, we arrived uh, from the airport still wearing our beads that they hand out on, at the airport on Fridays and, um, <clears throat> you know, so we're, we're feeling kind of self-conscious about it, but we arrived at Antenna Gallery and, um, and they, you know, and there was, and Jill Stoll was, was giving a presentation, also Ben Danino, um, and it, that was fantastic. Like already we were, we were like completely pulled in by, um, you know, how they were sharing their experience of, of making and creating art. And, um, and that was, that was fantastic. But, um, you know, but what we were struck by was how uh, engaging and informal and, and generous everyone was at the, um, you know, in their presentations. Um, so anyhow, um, but what we got, we got some feedback from people about um, about our presentation and how you know how they like to try, they'd like to try this animation um, technique um, with their collage and you know and and you know the idea of like okay well I have something that's static and how am I going to make this move and I can tell a whole other story with the same elements but now they're moving so. Uh, the following year, we wanted to um, we wanted to present uh, a kind of workshop, and so it ended up being Lori O'Brien and Lisa Barcy and myself um, who presented a workshop on the Friday just as Collage Fest was being canceled. So, but we managed we managed to have some attendees and and uh, and get to share some of our our, our knowledge and um, so anyhow um, I don't want to you know so so but I wanted to share let's see I have I also have uh, I have my own uh, uh, the vegetables um, I don't know what it was called now but you heard about it from Christopher and Christopher I Cord, and I also have my very first um, program, which is has my friend Lisa Barcy. Uh, her her um, collage is on the cover of the very first. So that's that is that was really special. We felt like like rock stars. Um, anyhow, oh thanks, uh, Llewellyn. Uh, that was another thing. I'm glad. I'm glad I I, I saw Luan's comment um, because another thing that came out of being at Collage Fest the first year was well before we do we decided that before we do our our um, our animation um, collage in motion workshop in New Orleans we should do it um, in Chicago. So we did it on World Collage Day, and Luan actually attended. Luan's here. And um, and it and it went really well. It went really well, and it's something that you know we hope to do again, hopefully, without any any um, 
I'm winding down here, Rick, because I see you've I see you're there. Um, so go ahead. Uh, I think you know I'll just end it there since I couldn't start my my slideshow, but um, it's given me a lot. I feel very I feel lots of warm feelings um, toward the whole community. Um, Christopher, you stole my my um, creative my my uh, crew my mystic crew idea. And, um, but, uh, but then you made me an honorary member. So, so that's, that's good enough for me. Well, yeah. thank you, Paloma. And uh, Danielle Cole, when uh, we were rehearsing yesterday, made a joke about how there should be a collage live drinking game where every time there's a glitch, people yeah. take a drink. Um, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Sounds good, um, yeah. And uh, but I really liked what you had said about that idea that artists need to nudge or push each other and be pushed or and nudged by each other because exactly. uh, I think that's that's part of I think what happens at Collage Fest is you start getting to build those relationships with people who can challenge you or who you can go to and be challenged by. Yeah. And uh, I know one of the, for me, one of the things that motivates me is, in this work is I keep, artists must commune with their own, what does it say? Kind, yes. <laughs> um, I, I keep meeting artists who are, who just constantly amaze and astound me. And that pushes me to do better and work harder and there are times I'm, I'm just utterly intimidated uh, by them. And, uh, but the flip side is I also know that, you know, when we all get in a room together, we're, we're kind of all the same. We're all bags of flesh moving through space and time. And that demystifying piece, uh, I think, is also equally powerful. But thank you, Paloma. We're next going to hear from Rosie Shinners. Uh, all the way from Salt Spring Island, British Columbia. And you may know Rosie as the 2019 World Collage Day poster artist and a remarkable collage artist. She is also one of the leaders of the Collage Street Crew that will be presenting in a week or two. And she's gonna talk about bonding with her fellow artists as the storm threatened the city and speak about how artists or how the event has impacted her. Rosie, are you there? <laughs> hey Rosie. Hi, thanks Rick. How's Canada? Canada's doing okay. We're pretty we're doing okay on Salt Spring Island here in beautiful British Columbia, so I can't complain. <laughs> now, Canada is has not opened the border yet, but you're on an island and so that means that if all of us Americans we can all go to your house, we just have to sneak in by water. Nope. <laughs> No. <laughs> Sorry, I'll let you know when the invitation's open though, I promise. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Rick and Chris and Christopher. You guys are amazing. And I'm definitely missing Collage Summer Camp this year, but uh, I look forward to future editions. Uh, I'm gonna share a little bit about my experience at Collage Fest last year. So I'm going to uh, see if I'm tech savvy and sharing my screen here. All right, is that uh, visible for everyone? Yeah. Yes? Okay, great. Okay, so um, although I've had the, the great pleasure to attend both editions of Collage Fest, uh, last year's version was particularly memorable as it came to be known as the Hurricane Berry edition. Uh, I was one of an international contingent who had to shelter in place as Collage Fest programming was slowly and eventually canceled. The threat of an impending hurricane had thwarted all of our plans. As we began to see flooding and hear reports of how bad this was really going to be, everyone realized that there was a small window of opportunity to leave town before things got potentially worse. Our numbers began to get smaller, 
But those of us left continued to soldier on with whatever programming we could still participate in or improvise with. And here's a couple of shots of um, what Kevin and Rick had mentioned of us gathering at Cafe Istanbul and making the best things, collaging away. So I had come to New Orleans with several large wheat paste murals in hand, and I was determined to get at least one up before I wouldn't be able to. Before he managed to get out of town, my roomie Lance, AKA Fan Club 13, assisted me and photographed my mural, which was done on a wall offered up by our Airbnb host. I had mentioned to her what I had come down for while we were on an emergency run to get water and supplies, and she kindly offered up a brick wall for me to work on. So that was a really nice thing that I could at least get one piece up somewhere. The next day with Lance and others leaving, the artist who could not arrange to leave before the airport closed took a survey of where everyone was located so we could at least check in on each other. I didn't really want to be alone in a ground floor cottage. So I took up the offer from Laurie O'Brien, who you've heard mentioned as uh, one of the stop motion animators. Uh, she invited me to move over to her place, which was an old church converted into an apartment. The place was high up and literally the most solid structure on that street in, in the neighborhood. And we had a boat, so <laughs> we felt pretty safe. Uh, after one last run for supplies, we hunkered down for two days with our apartment host, Franco, and his dog, Buddy. Franco, whose only job seems to be running a Mardi Gras makeup cart called Glitter Bitch, smoked the most weed I'd ever seen a human smoke. Because of this, he seemed pretty unfazed as to what was happening, which was actually strangely calming. So here uh, is Lori and I. Lori and I spent the time snipping, collaging, drinking wine, and chatting about everything under the sun. I even got my own personal stop motion animation workshop. And I would now like to debut for the first time the groundbreaking work I did from this session. Pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, Lori and I seriously bonded in a short period of time, and I'm so happy I went through that experience with her. After two days, it seemed that Hurricane Barry was not quite as powerful as anticipated, and we ventured out into the streets. Oh, you get to see it again. <laughs> so here's Lori and Franco and Buddy, and we're kind of surveying if. We're okay to, to finally head out. We were definitely determined to eat beignets before we left. Uh, and we heard that Cafe Du Monde was reopened. So we walked from the Bywater and met a whole group of artists who had stayed, hearing about their shelter in place experiences. Here, this lovely crew of ladies. Here's Paloma and Olia, Lisa, Cheryl, Lori, and myself. We spent our last night with a group of international friends having one last collage making space at the Aloft Hotel, followed by an evening of karaoke at Cajun's Pub, bonding over our shared experience of being the survivors of Collage Fest 2019, Hurricane Barry edition. And that's, that's it. And I look forward to more gatherings with everyone and seeing everyone in person, but I'm grateful that we can at least have this platform to share a little bit. Thank you, Rosie. You know, it's, um, it, was, it was kind of amazing watching last year artists jump in, self-organize, network, and also like care for each other. There was a real kind of like, does everybody have a place to be with other people during this time? And, um, you know, at, at the Loft Hotel, which was our host hotel, which flooded terribly, we're talking good eight inches of water in, on the first Wednesday, 
um, but they uh, they they kind of turned over uh, their some of their meeting space over to collage artists who just camped out and made collage. And I think Red Farrell from the Edinburgh Collage Festival uh, kind of took the lead on that. And I was worried. I was worried that you know you have all these artists and they're gonna. Uh, cut into the wood tables or make a mess or somehow annoy the hotel and the hotel was like this is the cutest thing we've ever seen there's artists in our lobby just making art all this time and um, kind of running 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 with the moment as it were again we are a resilient resilient community uh, our next speaker and last for uh, official speaker before we open it up to folks and I know we're running a little long today, but um, I'm, I'm having a lovely time. I hope you are as well. Uh, but Ben Danino, Ben Danino writes, Collage Fest basically changed my life and made me become more serious about making and showing my work. And he went on to uh, found the Twin Cities Collage Collective with other artists. And you know, Ben, Ben was interesting because Ben was, uh, we got this submission, I had never met Ben before, and the, the the collage work is Ben's work is absolutely beautiful, and uh, he had this amazing story about collaging. I hope I'm not stealing his story too much tonight, but he had this amazing story about collaging these uh, puzzles, these not puzzles, uh, paint by number paintings from his grandfather, and so he was one of the speakers at that. Why is that dinosaur holding that vacuum event? And um, well, Ben, I'm gonna hand it over to you. You wanna take it from there? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Right. Um, yeah, my name is Ben Danino. Um, so how I ended up being part of the whole collage family and collage fest is uh, I, I graduated from art school in the mid nineties um, with a degree in sculpture, a minor in art history and a like really negative disposition towards the art world. And I decided, I, this isn't for me. I don't want to do this. Um, I love making work, but trying to promote myself or showing in any way, it just wasn't my thing. So I ended up for about 20 years just making work, trading it with other artists, um, giving it away, or donating it to be auctioned for um, different fundraisers or events that I felt like they that needed the the that were looking for money or like auctioning art for for a cause um in 2017 i found collage magazine and every issue i got i was like blown away by so i wrote rick and said hey you know i just wanted to thank you for these amazing um, every issue i get it's been an inspiration it's made me want to make more work and he wrote back to me and said hey i like your writing would you like to write something for the magazine? So like he said, I wrote, I sent him a sample. I had just finished um, making these relief collage. I didn't really think of them as collages, um, more like mini sculpture relief things I made out of four paint by number um, paintings that my grandfather made in the 50s that my aunt found in her basement. Um, short story, my grandfather was an awful person, it was really abusive and alcoholic, and um, these paintings were awful, um, just bad paint by numbers, but I liked the colors. One day I just hacked them up and started gluing them together and made these little reliefs out of them. And it was like a real cathartic undertaking to take this art that was really not great by an awful person and try to create something visually interesting or beautiful out of it. So I wrote this story, Rick was into it, and he's like, hey, why don't you talk about it at Collage Fest? And I'm like, well, I, I knew that Collage Fest was coming up. I had thought about going, but you know, I was really intimidated. I'm, I'm never really thought of myself as a collage artist. And also, I am not much of a public speaker. I also know no one in the collage community at that time, um, but I decided, you know what, I'm gonna do this. Uh, so I end up in New Orleans in 2018 and it was just amazing. Every person I met was welcoming and just like really interesting and just open about their process. Um, like I remember talking to Alan Bealey about how he does image transfers and I was just like learned so much from everybody I met, was inspired by everyone and just like 
it was just amazing. And I came back home to Minneapolis and was just like, this is, this is my family. This is what I'm going to do now. Um, and I, I, at the time, before I went to Collage Fest, I was mainly doing more um, carved book work, which I still do. And one of my books is part of the fundraising exhibit for Collage Fest, or the online collage um, events here. Um, and you can see one if you haven't seen those before. I carve out old books, um, creating like a collage of imagery that was present in the book. And I've kind of gotten away from that to more strictly 2D collage, paper on paper um, type work. And I try to push myself and seeing how far I can push it working abstractly, representation wise with limited supplies, limited materials, working with slide film, um, something that I was inspired by after uh, um, a meeting with Zach Collins um, and Scott Neff. Um, here in Minneapolis a couple of years ago, and I've been working on working with vintage slides and collaging those and scanning them. But um, so I also, like like um, Rick said, I had met um, some people in New Orleans and, and noticed there were all these collage collectives. Came back to Minneapolis, I had already met some folks here and we started uh, the Twin Cities Collage Collective. And up until COVID hit, we were meeting monthly, presenting free collage meetups for the community to come. We gave them all the supplies. They could make whatever they wanted. And we were hosting a couple shows. We had events for Collage or Collage Day planned, um, a whole show we were going to have, which is now, if you go to Twin Cities Collage Collective, you can see all the submissions we asked for postcard size um, work and we got stuff from all over the world that is on our website um, and it's been great to find this community here to have like my mini collage fest it, it was monthly until covid uh, and i miss being able to be there this year with all you um, i did go to collage fest last year again and you've heard the stories about Hurricane Barry. I was one of the, the wimps that came and stayed for a day and then took off. Um, but in the 24 hours I had there, it was amazing. Uh, once again, to see everyone, it's, it's like family. And connecting with all of you here, but also like seeing everyone's work in, daily on Instagram and through Facebook, it's just such an inspiration. Um, it's been so great to have you encouraging me um, to make more work, better work, and be more serious about, oh yeah, I guess I am an artist. And there is a place for people that maybe feel socially awkward and can't promote themselves the way like the slick New York artists can. And um, I'm happy to have met and found all you. And hopefully next year, we can all meet up again in person. And thanks, Rick. Thanks for everything. And Chris and Christopher. You guys are amazing. Well, you're pretty amazing too, Ben. And this is the thing about Collage Fest. It kind of melts down into this like uh, gooey love fest of everyone <laughs> talking about how great everyone is. It's um, kind of an amazing thing to be a part of. And uh, But let's bring back all of our panelists and let's open it up to both questions and um, other people who want to share stories. You know, it's, there's a, for those who have not, been to the event um, may not know this, but there's there's a group on Facebook called the Collage Fest Support Group that was started after the first event as a way to kind of keep in touch with folks. And I believe that was Nikki, who I think might be here. I believe started that Nikki and Noel, Llewellyn, perhaps um, Nicola. Yeah. Um, but we have uh, so if you want to speak, you're welcome to use the raise the hand function or the Q&A function. Let's bring back all of our panelists. And um, Rick, can I, Rick, can I say something about Ben? That please. He did put into a story. And I was going to put it into my story, Ben, but I did not, that the jealous curator was so impressed by his workshop that she highlighted his work on her international site. <laughs> Ben, are you okay with this? Consent? No, that's Consent? fine, that's fine, yeah. Okay, and I remember going to Ben's site and there was one, one image on his Instagram and we were all like, Ben, you need to, what is happening right now? 
<laughs> yeah, I had just joined Instagram like the day before. Um, and it was, and, it was amazing. Well, that's <laughs> another thing. Like, you know, going to Collage Fest, I came home and I'm like, I need to make more work. And so I've told myself, I'm going to post a new work every day. And I have since Collage Fest 2018, I've had a new work I've posted every single day. Sometimes it's crap and I don't mind that it's crap. And I'll say, hey, I hate this. And I think it's great to show the crap and say, you know, not everything you see, like, because you go on Instagram and I see all this amazing work and it's nice to see stuff that's like, eh, maybe it's not the greatest thing. Um, but anyway, um, uh, you guys have all inspired me to kind of push myself to keep making work. So thanks. <laughs> so I want to uh, bring in uh, JRC, yeah. who is an artist from Southern California who attended the first Collage Fest. Is JRC around? Yeah. How you doing? Did you, JRC needs to unmute himself. Thing I'm in now, um, I'm in shadow. <laughs> but JRC did a performance, a performance conceptual. I don't even know how to describe it now. But what he did is he got us all making these little boats and um, putting these boats pretty much everywhere we went. And like they'd be at the hotel, at the artisan bar, at Cafe Istanbul, at Antenna Gallery. Um, Jerry, you want you want to talk about your experience a little bit? Sure. Yeah. You, um, I wrote you on just how to make a boat. Yeah, I wrote you on a whim because I saw the call for work in the in a, or the the events in the an issue of Collage Magazine, which I just started finding around town, and figured, well, why not? I want to start taking my work more seriously. Um, before I should say, before I started this body of work, I'd been running an art space for about ten years. And I had virtually stopped making my own work. Um, so when I, when I retired from that and moved out to California, it was an opportunity to start doing that again. And I was only maybe six months or so back into that when I got invited to go to Collage Fest. And I'd been doing on and off the uh, uh, Seaside Fleet and Dreamboat Research Project for years. But the opportunity to take it on the road like I wanted to at this scale was something new. Um, so I went to New Orleans and I met, uh, met Rick. And in return for coming down there, he, he also helped me publish the first book about uh, my work with the Seaside Fleet, uh, which I'm forever grateful for. It's opened a lot of doors for me as well. And I got to meet a whole bunch of people out there in between running from gallery to gallery. Uh, and in between installing the boat. So if you didn't get to meet me or you only saw me running away from you, it's because I was heading someplace else so I could get the, the boats to the next spot. Um, like a couple other people here have mentioned, I've got a little bit of uh, social anxiety. So actually talking to people on that isn't too, isn't too comfortable for me. But being able to, to sit with people and work on my collage around them has been a huge, huge help in that. And I got a lot of inspiration from people like Kiki, of course, who was there, um, Llewellyn, and uh, Clive Knight, who come over, I think, from uh, England, right? For the, for it. I, I had great conversations with all of them and continued to stay in touch to one degree or another. And uh, since I've come back to Los Angeles, I've been more consistent, not just with my craft, but with um, presenting myself as an artist and starting to feel more like an artist again. Uh, I started my own Instagram, which for some reason is weird barrier to entry for a lot of people, but I'm getting more comfortable using it. I update my website more regularly, and I've started going out to uh, enter more shows to get my work in front of people. Uh, I've done a couple of smaller seaside fleet projects here, as well as some traditional collage shows. Uh, I had a piece at the Burbank Public Library last year, or, or a, a solo exhibition there, which I was really happy with. And I've also started working at an art school which unfortunately is closed because of COVID, where I get to network and meet a lot more people and help them bring their work to life. And uh, last, uh, lastly, working on my collage work has also made a big difference in my mental health. Uh, I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety issues in the past couple of years, and being able to work consistently and channel my subconscious into my work is, has been a big part of my, of my uh, mental health improvement practice. 
I just wanted to say that. Oh, um, there's one thing. Uh, ben mentioned posting a work that he doesn't like or he doesn't think is good enough on his Instagram. And there's a story I always think of this, which I don't have all the memory to, but there was once this poet who was on Fresh Air with Terry Gross, and he said that no matter what, he makes sure he writes a poem a day. And he read his, his example for that day. And Terry asked him afterwards, well, what do you do if the poem's not that good? He goes, well, I, I lower my standards. So just feel free to do that. You're not all going to be great. Yeah. There you go. Thank you very much, uh, um, Rick, and everyone who is at a, a Collage Fest 1. And I hope to see you again in the future. And if anybody wants to bring the seaside fleet to their town, drop me a note. We'll figure out a way to do it. Well, JRC, people are asking in the chat for your Instagram. So you might want to. Type oh. it in there. Okay, it's. Uh, I'll, I'll other people are asking for other people's Instagram, so uh, feel free to shamelessly promote your Instagram in the chat. <laughs> Will do. Um, anybody else would like? Would, would anyone else like to share a story or thought or ask a question? If not, we're gonna we'll leave the chat open a little bit, but we're gonna we're gonna wrap up. All, oh, and ask for um, when the next Collage Fest will be. So here's, here's the deal with all of our partners, because we work with uh, a bunch of galleries of museums, uh, Tulane University, uh, a whole bunch of folks are involved, including the host hotel, which has now moved from the loft to the international house. So we've essentially got everyone in a holding pattern. And the time, a time will come when we, we, we can do Collage Fest and know that it'll be safe to meet in about two months time. And when that time arrives, what we are going to do is say, this is happening. <laughs> All of our partners that we uh, work with to produce this event, um, everyone's kind of in this holding pattern and we're waiting to see what happens. Uh, so that's, that's the story of when Collage Fest New Orleans will take place again. And um, it's, it's kind of interesting. Also, if, if folks have questions, they are more than willing to reach out and ask. Um, you are more than, I'm sorry, not willing, you are more than uh, invited to reach out and ask. It's been interesting sometimes watching comment threads where people ask questions about Collage Fest and try to answer them when I'm right here. <laughs> so um, if you have questions, just shoot us an email or hit us up on Facebook and um, we, we do we do see it. Uh, last call for any uh, questions. Daphna, we, Daphna has... wants to speak, so I'm gonna let her talk. Go ahead. All right, Daphna, you can uh, go for it. Hi, um, okay. So I wanted to hear my Collage Fest story because my first Collage Fest was incredible. Um, and I hadn't even heard about Collage Fest. I didn't know what Collage Fest was until I happened to Google, um, collage open calls and saw collage fest and it was like three weeks before it was supposed to happen and I'm like pardon my language I was like fuck it I'm buying a ticket I'm going and I went and it was the most incredible experience I've ever had um but I wanted to share a fun story from the first year also yes saw somebody uh, mentioned women in collage yay women in collage super important I'm so happy I had the opportunity to share that but I wanted to share a fun story about why I love Collage Fest. Um, the last night we were all together, after the storytelling, um, I was invited by a friend who was down there to a pool party at the aquarium, which is a space in um, New Orleans. And um, I brought a bunch of collage artists and to keep a long story short, the collage artists broke the pool. And when I say broke the pool, the pool collapsed. And it was amazing. And when I happened to mention to somebody at the party that it was a bunch of collage artists that broke the pool, they were like, wow, collage artists are crazy. And I was like, yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, and then the next year, there was a river that ran in front of my Airbnb, so it felt like a kind of a continuation of a theme. So I'm really hoping that the next Collage Fest, there's going to be some kind of water theme thing that happens, hopefully. So that's my story, and I just wanted to share that. And thank you all so much. You are all amazing. I love everybody that's part of the Collage community because 
it's such a welcoming and friendly community and y'all are awesome. And Daphna, thank you for uh, telling the, the G-rated version of that story. You're uh, very welcome. Ask <laughs> me if anybody wants to R-rated, I'll let them know. <laughs> well, everyone, we're gonna um, we're gonna close down the more formal part of the meeting, partly because it's really awkward being on screen for everyone, isn't it? Yeah. Those of people on screen. So I wanna I wanna let them go. Um, we're gonna keep the chat open for the next. 15 or 20 minutes or so, or until we wind down. Thank you everyone for coming to this second uh, installation of Collage Live Online. We reconvene again on Saturday when we visit the uh, Hayfield Gallery of Eve and Steve in Vermont. And, um, and then after that event, we, have, uh, we go back to, we see Rosie again for the Collage Street Crew. Um, and they're gonna give the folks who attend a challenge at that event. So check out the website and uh, register. And it's wonderful to see everyone here tonight. Thank you everyone for coming. Yeah. Good night.